Hello everyone, my name is Amit Jaiswal and one of the ED consultant at King's Mill Hospital and I am the training program director for Point of Care Ultrasound in East Midlands. So the objectives of this presentation is to go through the EFAST and AAA scan indications. We'll talk about certain limitations and we'll go through to what to look for while doing while doing a EFAST scan and we'll also touch on some clinical pearls that you should remember while scanning. So fast scan which is focus assessment using sonography in trauma is to look for free fluid within the abdomen or the thorax. Initially we used to have four views where our focus was looking for free fluid within the abdomen. Now we have included lungs as well and hence called e-fast or extended fast scan. So what are the indication of EFAST scan? We want to do EFAST scan if we are suspicious of uh, trauma to the chest and when we are worried about uh, hemothorax or pneumothorax or uh, tamponade. In terms of intra-abdominal injuries, we are worried about solid organ injuries. In some circumstances, we can use point of care ultrasound or EFAST to look for free fluid in conditions such as rupture ectopic. I want to highlight that EFAST scan is, is a very focused scan. It is absolutely operator dependent. It has got very high sensitivity and is very specific to picking up free fluid. But it may not be able to tell you what structures are damaged if there is a free fluid. But as a matter of fact, you won't be able to find out uh, if the free fluid is blood or is it pus or is it ascites. And the other important part is, if you do not see a free fluid, it doesn't exclude that there is no significant injuries. Now, question arises, how many views do we need to scan a structure? As for x-rays, for an x-ray, you always need two views to exclude any significant injuries to the bones. That also applies to ultrasound. You need at least a minimum of two views, transverse and longitudinal view while we're doing a point of care ultrasound. Now, the importance lies within this picture. So what are the areas we need to scan when we are doing a EFAST scan? So in abdomen, we have to scan the hepatorenal space or Morrison pouch, as appears here. The second view is the splenorenal space. The third one is subxiphoid view. The fourth view is the pelvic view where we scan around the bladder. And because this fast scan is extended fast scan, we also scan the lungs in the third or fourth intercostal space, right side and left side. So the first potential space within the abdomen where fluid tends to collect is hepatorenal space or Morrison pouch. And the way to scan is to put the curvilinear probe in mid axillary line at the level of epigastrium. So let's understand this image. So we are in the mid axillary line trying to scan hepatorenal space with our probe marker towards the head in a coronal section. So this will be towards the head. The other side is feet. So the first structure we encounter is diaphragm followed by liver and the kidney. And the potential space called Morrison pouch is between the liver and kidney. I would like to emphasize that when you are scanning, always look above the liver and below the liver. Now here, part of the liver is missing. So make sure when you are scanning, it's a dynamic scan, look at the lower part, the uh, lower edge of the liver. An example of what fast positive in right upper quadrant looks like, you can see a hypoechoic or black area outside the kidney below the liver and it is surrounding the lower edge of the liver. Another example, here the fast scan positive, it's a very subtle sign. If you're not careful, you can easily miss this and this area. Another fast positive, so you can see a thin rim of hypoechoic fluid or anechoic fluid and there is also anechoic fluid collected 
above the diaphragm. So we, here we have got pleural fusion in the context of trauma. This will be hemothorax. And you can see this wavy line, which is basically the shadow of uh, vertebrae. Coming on to left upper quadrant view, here we are trying to look for free fluid around the spleen and the kidney. So we place the probe in posterior axial line in a coronal section with a probe marker towards the head. Now it is quite important that when you are scanning on the left side, your probe is almost touching the bed because you are in posterior axillary line. And remember, the kidney on the left side is, is slightly higher compared to the right side. So let's understand this image. So we are in posterior axillary line. Dot is towards the head of the patient or probe marker towards the head of the patient. So this is the dot here. So you have got diaphragm, then you have got spleen, and you have got kidney. So coming on to what fast positive in left upper quadrant looks like, uh, normally you will, you would expect a free fluid between the spleen and kidney, but I've deliberately chosen this image just to demonstrate that free fluid can also appear above the spleen on the left side and on the right side above the liver. Another example where you have got free fluid just above the spleen, but there is a massive pleural fusion. In context of trauma, this will be hemothorax. So the third view is the subsephoid view, where I am expecting you to put the probe in this epigastric area, where the sound waves is waves are directed towards the heart, and I'm expecting you to get a liver as a window with the inverted heart. Okay, and if you are seeing a free fluid, it will be collected within the pericardium. You can use either the curvilinear probe or a phased error probe but be mindful of the probe orientation and the image acquisition some example of what free fluid around the heart or pericardial effusion looks like so here i'm expect i'm seeing a normal heart you have got r a r v l a and l v and i'm using liver as the window on the other image i can see the heart border here where I can see an indentation on the right ventricle and there is a free fluid outside the heart within the pericardium okay and what I'm seeing here is a paradoxical RV compression in diastole which amounts to a tamponade and this is an urgent or sorry it's an emergency so the fourth view is the pelvic view where we are scanning bladder and looking for free fluid around the bladder. Uh, so far, we have been scanning hepatorenal space, space or splenorenal space or subsephoid view and taking only one view. But in pelvic scan, we do take transverse and longitudinal view both. Now, remember the bladder is a pelvic structure, so you might want to direct the sound waves towards the pelvis. So sometimes we end up making the probe very very flat close to the skin to acquire the the bladder so let's understand this image so i am doing a supra pubic view a, a fast scan where i'm looking at the bladder which has got anechoic free anechoic fluid and looking just outside the bladder you can see anechoic structure here and this side as well in context of trauma this is a this is blood and it is considered as fast positive now i would like you to be mindful that there are there are ileic vessels so one one on each side sometimes trainees can confuse ileic vessel as a free fluid now ileic vessels will be circular and it will be pulsating and it doesn't change its position when the patient is turned into different site Coming on to the longitudinal view of, of a suprapubic scanning, and here I'm looking at the bladder, which has got anechoic fluid, and this image is from a female patient because I can see uterus. If you watch carefully, I can see some anechoic free fluid around the uterus, 
on this side in context of trauma this is considered as fast positive so the last area of scan is the thoracic scan and I'm going to use a curvilinear probe with less depth or you can use a linear probe which has got a high frequency and obviously the high frequency probe will give you a, a, a good or clear image so you put the probe into a longitudinal plane with the dot facing towards the head in mid clavicle line on either side when you're lying supine air tends to collect in context of trauma pneumothorax air tends to collect anteriorly and that makes ultrasound more sensitive than the x-ray and i'm expecting to get image something like this so you are between two ribs you get two rib shadows and between those ribs you can see visceral and parietal pleura sliding and this appearance is also called a cometal sign or as if ant is marching in m mode um, you should be able to see something called a c sore sign in a normal lung so you have got granular sore and then the c as a barcode so let's understand this image so i'm scanning in mid clavicular line using a curvilinear or a linear probe and I'm scanning between two ribs and I'm seeing is the skin, subcutaneous tissue, intercostal muscles, rib shadow, rib shadow and between those ribs I can see pleural sliding. Coming on to the second view I can see skin, subcutaneous tissue, intercostal muscles but look at this pleural line they're not sliding the end marge or the comet tail appearance is absent here and that amounts to a pneumothorax in m mode um, in the normal lung you should be able to see the c sore sign where you have got granular and the barcode pattern but if you have got a pneumothorax that granular pattern disappears and the entire image appears as if it is a barcode this is also called a stratosphere sign that brings us to the end of EFA scan presentation. Uh, some clinical pearls. Please make sure you have documented your finding. If you have not documented, it has never been done. Scanning in hepatorenal space or splenorenal space, sometimes rib shadow causes a lot of nuisance. And this can be avoided by rotating the probe in a way that the dot or the probe marker faces the scapula. Um, when we are doing a pelvic scan, be mindful of iliac vessel, which can be easily confused as a free fluid. Uh, the other pearl would be when you're doing a pelvic scan, reduce the gain. So, as a matter of fact, any free fluid structure or fluid area, if you are scanning, try to reduce the gain as much as possible. Um, if a scan or poor point of care ultrasound is is a, is a dynamic scan always stop look pan throughout all the structures within our body are solid organs they are 3d one slide may not be enough so always pan fan slide and rock the probe repeat scan if if necessary the first scan if there is no free fluid doesn't mean there is there is no solid organ injury if you are concerned either go for CT scan or ask for expert opinion Tend to use try to use a cinelu feature uh, which allows you to um, reviewing the images without scanning the patient uh, kindly remember the point of care ultrasound is a ruling technique as i said if you are in doubt go for a ct scan moving on to uh, assessment of abdominal aorta for suspected aneurysm in this talk in this in this talk will uh, briefly touch about how a triple a patient can present how to perform the procedure uh, bearing in mind the triple a scan by point of care ultrasound is as sensitive as 99 percent and can be performed within five minutes we'll also talk about certain pitfalls you need to remember when when, when scanning so presentation um any elderly patient coming to you with back pain or flank pain, plus minus hypotension or abnormal pain or syncope, you must be thinking about AAA, not a renal calculi, as I have seen many often to talk about getting a CTKUB. 
So thoracic aorta becomes abdominal aorta at the subsifoid level and it divides at the umbilicus into two iliac vessels. The maximum diameter considered as normal for abdominal aorta is 3 cm and there are few branches you need to remember. The first one is celiac axis, second one is superior mesenteric artery and inferior mesenteric artery. So here we have got aorta with three branches, the first one, second one and third one. So when we are doing a AAA assessment, the choice of transducer is curvilinear probe which has got low frequency which allows the sound waves to travel deep. Uh, the scan is done both in transverse and longitudinal pain. So I'm talking about transverse where the probe marker is towards 9 o'clock and then the longitudinal pain where the probe marker is towards the head. Uh, for the sake of acquiring the image for assessment, you must save at least three transverse images, the proximal, mid and lower part. And the fourth image will be of the longitudinal plane. Now let's try to understand a transverse image of a abdominal aorta. So here um, the probe marker is on towards the right patient, right of the patient. This is the superficial part. This is the deepest structure. Here we get a, we, here we are looking at the vertebrae, leaving a vertebral shadow. The aorta and IVC, they both are superficial or anterior to the vertebral body. Uh, aorta lies on to the left. IVC lies onto the right. Abdominal aorta is more circular compared to IVC, which is more collapsed, and it does change its diameter with the respiration. You might sometimes end up seeing IVC pulsating. It is because of the close proximity to uh, the abdominal aorta, and the uh, the pulsation is transmitted. So we have to be mindful. Uh, we have talked about number of measurements we take, so three transverse and one longitudinal view, but you have to scan the entire aorta. When measuring the size of aorta, you do a vertical diameter from anterior to posterior and make sure that the part which has got aneurysm is definitely measured and the measurement is done from inner to inner diameter. Now we'll talk about this inner to inner diameter in a minute. So the first or the proximal part of the AAA assessment includes focusing of the abdominal aorta where the celiac trunk comes out and it divides into hepatic and splenic artery. And this gives a view of a seagull and it's called seagull sign. The second or the middle part of abdominal aorta includes assessing the aorta where you get a branch called superior mesenteric artery and here we are looking at the transverse view we have got a vertebral shadow anterior to the vertebrae you have got abdominal aorta and then you have got IVC on the right of the patient see uh, superior mesenteric artery now this picture can be compared to the snowman appearance or snowman sign so let me describe this so you have got vertebral body as a body of a snowman and then you have got uh, SMA as the hat hat of the snowman, followed by the IVC, which forms the arm. And then you have got abdominal aorta as the face. And that makes it appear as a snowman. Sometime when we are at the midsection of the abdominal aorta, you may be lucky to see the renal arteries coming out of the abdominal aorta. So you have got right and the left branch of the renal arteries. The distal part of the aorta comprise the division of the abdominal aorta into right and left iliac uh, branches and that's how it appears in the transverse fashion. So the longitudinal assessment of a triple A, um, the, the, the curvilinear probe has got probe marker towards the head. So uh, this will be the proximal part of the abdominal aorta. This will be the distal part. And the branches, the first branch as it comes out is the celiac axis, followed by superior mesenteric artery. Inferior mesenteric artery is not included here. Now I put a second image just for comparison purpose. Now, 
Ideally, I would like the images to be saved in a way that the, trans the, the abdominal aorta uh, appears more of a horizontal rather than kind of a more uh, tangential. Although this is acceptable, but this it tells me that the person who's scanning has 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 less experience. Um, the way to acquire or convert this tangential abdominal aorta to a more of horizontal is by doing a hill toe movement of the probe. So rocking the probe from side to side, you can uh, change the tangential plane into more of a horizontal plane, which we can discuss when uh, we are doing a practical session. Now we have to remember that when we are scanning the ab abdominal aorta, we take a vertical measurement. And because abdominal aorta can be pendulous and it lose its straight line as you grow old, so it is quite important that you do not take a, a slanting slice. It must be vertical, otherwise you will end up falsely uh, denoting abdominal aorta as, as aneurysm. Let's understand this image. If I'm trying to do a triple assessment for one of my patients who's coming with back pain, and this is what I get, this image will not be able to exclude triple a because i'm not sure whether this is aorta or whether this is vertebra or this is ivc if that in that situation arises and you have tried best to get the image uh, an optimum image where you can safely exclude triple a if not then go for a ct um ct scan another example where a trainee can be deceived in measuring the true diameter of abdominal aorta so uh, in noise hand the abdominal aorta lumen will appear as if this is the diameter but actually the true, true diameter extends far beyond this section and it appears falsely small because of a large thrombus sitting there so you have to be mindful it is quite important to remember that aneurysm in the aorta can be of three different size and shape the first one is called secular aneurysm where a sac just pops out on one side of the wall the second type is the fusiform aneurysm where the entire abdominal aorta is, is ballooned the third one is a pseudoaneurysm which is basically a false lumen within the wall of the uh, of the abdominal, abdominal aorta that brings us to the end of AAA assessment in a patient coming to us with possible back pain um, abdominal pain with or without syncope i put some references for you to to look for more detailed reading if you need thank you very much